Uh, I, I missed what I call negative space. I want each of you as the designer to talk about negative space. Oh. Um, let's start with you, Susan. There's, there's the important. space you create, and then there's the space Space that's... around. And that negative space, that again, it goes back to art school. And what happens nowadays, and again, this is to do with life in general, is if you... Um, people don't see. When I'm teaching people to draw, I see, draw what you see, not what you think you see. Hear what you hear, not what you think you hear. We don't. We live through life. And again, I think this is the influence of television with everything going so You don't really see what's going on around you. And I think if you're a trained artist, that negative space is so important, but you have to be trained or you may naturally come upon it, but to be aware of that shape because that can often, especially if you're having problems with a set or a fitting, if you look at the shape around, you can often find what the problem is by um, anchoring your eye on the shape around rather than the shape you've been looking at all along. It's like a sculptor. A sculptor looks the shape around to find a piece of a sculpture. I, I think that what we're really talking about is uh, what I call the ability to edit. And, and I think there's a tendency in lighting to, to want to keep going more, 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 more. I mean, you know, a rig is like a small rig now is 350 lamps. You know, it used to be like 100 lamps was a small rig, you know, that kind of thing. And I think that, uh, interestingly, there's an exercise that we, we, we were doing at the, the theater school with a simple little lighting plot, and you light your little scene. Then you say, okay, if you had to lose one of your lamps, what would you take away? And what it, what it really is emphasizing is the real value of the lamp versus not the lamp. And by that I mean that if you are lighting something, it often is the fact that you want to take things away. I, you t I mean, it's not quite the same with, with space because it's really light. It's like light or absence of light. And actually the key is often to take something away after you've got into trouble. Uh, it happened very dramatically down at, uh, uh, was it Indiana? I forgot whether I was at Indiana University or it was, um, no, it, it was CMU at um, Carnegie Mellon, where a, a director was saying, there's something wrong here, something wrong here. Just take away everything but that one lamp. And it was like revelation. And it's the fact that I think that... This was a student writing design. Yeah, I think that, that if you are working in a situation where you're prepared to edit and to create lack of light as opposed to keep piling on light. You're really on to something. And the tendency frequently is you think more is better. Well, no, more, I mean, nothing exceeds like excess. Uh, what you really want to do is keep refining, refining, refining. So that in the same way as what Susie's saying about sort of the negative space, the space around, it's, it's what you don't light or how you don't light which is as important as what you light and how you light. Right. And I go back to what Robin always said, less is more. Who said that? Robin often said that, less is more. Yeah, if, you, if, 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 if a good director is in trouble, they take something away. If a bad director is in trouble, they add. It's, it's time and time again. It's true. That, I mean, you know, it's like a bad director mm -hmm. is in trouble with a the scene. They say, well, we'll add three footmen. Or, or we'll add another piece of furniture. But a good director says, okay, you who have been apparently important in the scene, sorry, we're going to take you out of this scene. Right. And then you suddenly go, right, now the scene is working. So it, it, when I say editing, I think edit, learning to edit as an artist is actually one of the, mm -hmm. the, the most critical skills. And is negative space shadow for you? Yeah, probably in that sense. Or, or it is, I say, it's, it's, it's either lack of light or taking away a light in order to make the composition more interesting. In other words, it, like you think light reveals, well, also shadow reveals. You know, right. how does a shadow reveal? Because if if you don't have if you have a shadowless world, you actually see very little of form. I mean, we're all we're all three dimensional people, 
if you take away a light source and you get very strong light from one side and not the other side, you suddenly are very aware of three dimensions. Right. So that you can en enhance the look of the show from the point of view of the three dimensionality by actually editing, taking away light if you've, if you've overdone it. Which can bring me to a, a good theater story if you'd like that. Um, a dear director, he's now no longer with us, Bert Shevelov, who wrote uh, the book for Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, incidentally, was here in Stratford doing a production of a sort of a, a I call it a pastiche musical. It was sort of an assembled musical. Um, and we were having an evening lighting session and uh, a large bottle had appeared in the course of the evening and it was freely indulged in by good old Bert. And we got to a point where we were cl almost at the stopping point and and Bert said, I said, well, Bert, what, what, what's the feeling of this next scene that you really want to do? You see, and he said, make it blue, make it really blue. So I said, fine, okay. So I began by taking away white light and adding a little bit of blue. No, no, blue, blue, more blue. So, you know, knocking the bottle back, I think. And so we progressed toward what was really an awful looking cube, but it was like more blue, more, now we're getting, now we're getting, now we're getting. So I said, well, sorry, we really must stop now because it's you know time to save the show and all that kind of thing, you see. And so he lurched off into the night. And uh, the next morning we came back to the session, you see, and I said, well, I said, let's start with where we left off last night. So I put up this cue, you see. He looks at me, what in the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's my favorite, favorite story of lighting revelation. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Michael. My pleasure. Are we out?